There is another quantity which is very commonly used to describe the impact of an external force on an object. This quantity is called impulse, defined as the product of the external force and the time interval over which the force is exerted. Impulse is a vector and its unit is newtons times seconds. An object may experience multiple forces during the same time. Therefore, the net impulse is equal to the net force multiplied by the time interval. We call Newton's second law in the form of momentum. The net force times the, net, the time interval is equal to the change in the total momentum. In other words, the net impulse is equal to the change in the momentum of an object or a system. In physics, a system is a group of objects. Let us take a look at this example. A car moving at 10 meters per second crashes into a tree and stops in 0.26 seconds. Calculate the average force the seatbelt exerts on a passenger in the car to bring him to a halt. The mass of the passenger is 70 kilograms. Let's solve this problem. But first, we need to mention that the force by the seatbelt on the passenger is not a constant value. Rather, it changes over time. As shown in this figure, for the sake of simplicity, we use the average force to substitute the real force. This does not matter as long as the total product of force and time is the same. To solve this problem, we first to understand what is the concept. And based on what we just mentioned, the concept is pretty clear. It is about the impulse on this passenger. So we can write first impulse on a person. And then we can list the equation about impulse on this person, which is J equals F times del T, and it is equal to the change in momentum. And let us analyze this equation and let's see what we are looking for and we, what we know. So we are looking for the force, the external force on this passenger, which means that we are looking for F. And let, let us take a look what we know. We don't know how much impulse is, but we know that the time interval over which the force exerted is given, which is equal to 0 0.26 seconds. And we don't know directly the change in momentum. However, we know that momentum is equal to mass times velocity. The change in momentum is equal to mass times change in velocity, which is the final velocity minus initial velocity. And we know mass of this passenger is given, which is 70 kilograms. We also know that finally this passenger is stop, which is why the final velocity is zero. And initial velocity is given, which is 10 meters per second. So we know that. And now the strategy is clear. To find a force, we can use the change in momentum divided by change in time. And let us plug numbers. So delta P is going to be 70 times 0 minus 10 divided by 
0 0.26. This will have a number negative 2.7 times 10 to the third newtons. I need to mention this, that the negative sign refers to the direction of force is opposite to the motion direction. The seat belt exerts a force which is opposite to the motion direction. And also, pay attention to the number. It is 2,700 newtons. It's pretty large force. So that's why um, the force by seat belt on a passenger is pretty big if the car stops immediately. Let us look at another example. This one says a baseball has a mass of 0 0.140 kilograms. The baseball's initial velocity is negative 38 meters per second. Then the bat hits the baseball and the baseball moves away at positive 58 meters per second. Find the impulse by the bat on the baseball. Again, the concept behind this problem is clear, which is about impulse. So we can write impulse on a baseball. Again, we can write the associated equation, which is again J equals force times time and equals change in momentum. Now, based on this problem, we're looking for impulse. So this is what the desired quantity. Now, do we know force? No, it's not given. Do we know time? No. Do we know change in linear momentum? Not directly, however, again, we know that this is equal to mass times final velocity minus initial velocity. And we know mass, which is 0 0.140. We know final velocity 58. We know initial velocity negative 38. So we know that J is going to be just delta and delta P is going to be 0 0.140 times 58 minus negative 38, which is same as plus positive 38. So the answer is going to be 13 newtons seconds. And let's continue the previous example. If the contact time between the bat and the baseball is 1.6 times 10 to the negative third seconds, what is the average force by the bat on the baseball? Again, I wanted to think about the contact between the bat and the baseball. The force actually is not constant. If you remember the figure in the first example, the force starts from zero and goes up very quickly to the top peak and then drops to zero again. So this process is not a constant force. But for the sake of simplicity, we can always use the average force to substitute the real force. And the average force should be somewhere between the peak value and zero. So again, let's find the concept. Well, the concept is going to be the same. Impulse on a baseball. And the equation is J equals F times delta T equals delta P. We are looking for the average force, so this is the desired quantity. Now, do we know J? Actually, yes. We just solved, which is 13 newtons seconds.
Do we know time? Yes, it is given 1.6 times 10 to the negative third seconds. Do we know change in momentum? Yes, which is same as in pause, 30. So you can find force by doing either J divided by T or delta P divided by T. So let's use the first one, which is going to be 13 divided by 1.6 times 10 to the negative third. And the answer is 8.1 times 10 to the third Newtons.